I am going to actually go and remove the logic board from here because I want to check the heat sink compound. So if I'm telling you now that is not for the faint of heart. If you have any doubts as to your technical expertise, if you will, um, I highly, highly suggest that you elect not to go any further than this. So with that said, I'm gonna get to work here. Still battery is disconnected, so I have no juice here. So let's go ahead and get these connectors off. Most of the connectors will lift upward to remove them. I'm just using this little pair of tweezers here. Disconnect the fans, of course. A little bit of black electrical tape there holding that one down. I have to say the component density on this board is pretty amazing. I really gotta give it up to, to Apple for being able to cram this much power into this small form factor. I just wish we might have went a little extra on the heating or the cooling system. Set this over here. This is our VGA cable here. So I want to unlatch this. As you can see, just pull this latch up and over and then so that looks like it slides backward. So slide this out. another connector. Now this connector here does not lift up. This this connector here does not lift up. You have to actually pull this one straight backward. Just like so. Okay, so this is disconnected. This is disconnected. Both of these guys are disconnected. This guy's disconnected. This guy's disconnected. not seeing any more wires so what I'll do next is actually go ahead and remove the fans and those are T6 again so remove these T6 screws holding the fans in place let's see how the fan should just slides right up out of place Dust free, like that. So set this one over here. This three screws holding this in place. Lift this guy out. I do have a little bit of dust right there, but nothing. Nothing. Nothing more. Go ahead and get the optical drive out of the way. I see one screw here. Another screw down here. And I'm willing to bet there's probably a screw underneath this holding the um, wireless card in place. Those appear to be Phillips head, just standard zeros. It's very important too as you remove these screws that you keep track of where they all go. You certainly don't want to have an issue where you don't remember where the screw went. if I ever go to change this out to a Blu-ray drive. So evidently there is a 9.5 millimeter Blu-ray drive that can be put into this if you swap out the top part of the deck. But from what I've seen on eBay, it's rather expensive. It looks like it's actually much more expensive than simply purchasing an external. Which is kind of a shame, but that's all right. Slide our optical drive up out of the way. I think we're ready for logic board removal. So, let's see what 
Ball's holding it in place. Looks like we've got more T6 Torx bits. down here as well. Ah, okay, that pops up. And once, okay, that's much closer to a standard PC connector. All right, so make sure you remove these two guys as well. The back side of the leftmost flat ribbon cable, actually the, this, this side of it pops up and then you can slide the cable out that way. Interesting. All right, let's continue removing screws holding this all in position. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, what I tend to do when I remove the screws is I'll have, like this is my, I know this is my logic board section. And as I remove the screws, I actually kind of put them into a similar position as to how they are sitting on the board. Very gently see if, oh no, it looks like I have another little connector right here underneath that fan with another one of those little tiny pops up so I don't want to, want to make sure I don't forget that. Always double and triple check. You don't want to tear any of these little connectors. You do that and you are up the creek. I think this needs to come off too. So that looks like a double odd. Tiny little screws holding this guy on. And I have a feeling we're going to have a couple more cables underneath there. Yep. Let's very carefully remove these guys out the way as well. Looks like our SATA connectors and potentially a it looks like connectors go off to the hard drive. So we'll work this out. And this is another one of those little pop-up ribbons. Looks to, be. looks to be another one of those little pop-up ribbons, maybe? Yes. Looks like that pops right up there. The uh, little bit of tape on there looks like it's one of the slightly kind of so I'm just going to carefully remove this. Got slightly cockeyed. There we go. And again, we have what looks to be another. I guess these are um, temperature junctions, what it looks to be. Just temp hookups. So let's slide this one very carefully out of there, too, after popping up that, that little lock. There we go. Okay, so all of those guys are now disconnected as well. Check and make sure there's nothing under the RAM. can't be too cautious with stuff like this, so take your time, don't rush it. That does not look like anything's there. Looks like, okay, I'm just sliding free now. So I want to be very careful not to damage any of the cabling. Ah, see there? See there? I left this guy here. See, it's starting to pull out on its own, but I want to be careful with that. So there's another connection right there. I didn't quite get them all, but now it feels like it's free. Is there any other, anything else in here? Let's take this up one. Oh, it looks like we have a connection right here. That looks to be, yep, the MagSafe connector. You know what? I don't even have to remove that because all I'm looking to get is the heat sink here. So what I'm going to do instead is just very carefully rotate this around. Get my, might actually be a number one, it is. Get my number one screwdriver, Phillips head, and I will remove. Now as you loosen these up, they do have pressure on them, so I don't recommend you actually take them all the way out like I just did there. Break them all a little loose so you, uh, you don't have to worry about putting too much pressure on any one point of the board. All right, we've got all six screws there. Now, take a look and, oh God, way too much. Wow. Yeah, they, they basically doused this. Oh, that is, that is crazy. There's enough, there's enough heat sink here to cover probably a couple of machines. That is our heat sink compound. So, what we're gonna do <coughs> is we're gonna grab a couple of um, 
things are isopropyl rubbing alcohol, 91%. Used to clean that off. I'm actually going to use, um, there's so much there, I'm, I'm actually going to scrape a lot of the excess off immediately. I need to get some, I need to get my buffing compound, um, my polishing compound for the heat sinks, and some paper towels. Okay, we've got our isopropyl rubbing alcohol, 91%. We've got our paper towels. And this is what I use to polish my heat sinks. This is Mother's Incredible Billet Metal Polish, and I'll show you this in action shortly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take myself a piece of paper towel, and I'm gonna scrape the worst of this amazing mess off of here. You wanna be careful that you don't bend up anything, so I'm a little surprised. But from what I understand, this has been a common problem with the apples. Notice I'm using a wooden toothpick here. You do not want to use anything that's going to scratch the metal. Don't use a screwdriver. Don't use anything metallic on there. Let's get this little dust bunny out the way. And then we will do the same. And I do have the Radian 6770, one gig in this. All right, so that's the biggest chunks of it off. Shamel this to Apple and tell them bad. I mean, they are wasting money by spending way too much on that. All right, so I'm gonna start with the heat sinks themselves. Take a little dab, base of purple rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna get as much of that out of there as we can. It's to be replaced with some proper Arctic silver. Nice thing too about using a high strength rubbing alcohol like this very easy to get rid of. Now, this is something I really want to take and show you guys. You see how these heat sinks look? Yeah. Wait till we hit that with the polish. I'm going to very carefully clean down the CPU. Get all this old crap out of here. pick back and I want to clean this excess out from these capacitor or uh, resistors on this. Much like everything, take your time, do it right. <clears throat> Don't rush it. A few extra minutes here are gonna be a whole lot better spent than if you have to re you know disassemble this thing yet again because you didn't take your time. Not gonna do it right, don't bother doing it at all. Now once you clean this with the alcohol, once you clean the cord, do not touch it. Believe it or not, just the oils in your fingers, even if your fingers are completely clean, there's still going to be remnants of oil on there, and you do not want to get that on there. That will absolutely hamper performance. Let's take a look inside. See how nice and shiny these are. See how shiny they are? That's how you want them to be. See, the smoother and flatter your metal is, the shinier it will be. And believe it or not, the Arctic Silver and any of your thermal compounds, they're not supposed, they're not meant to conduct the heat per se. They're only meant to fill in the little microscopic voids between the metal to metal. Ultimately, if you wanted the absolute best heat transfer, you would have direct metal to metal with sufficient pressure to ensure there's absolutely no gap between them. But that's impossible, pretty much. I mean, at least with current technology, I say that, but who knows, maybe in 200 years, somebody will come up with a way to make it, you know, microscopically flat. Probably be like, you know, carbon or, you know, graphite sheet or something. But anyway, I digress. Um, the point is you want it as absolutely clean and shiny as you can get it. And you only want enough thermal compound to just barely fill in those tiny little cracks. All right, now that we've cleaned the heat sink and the CPU, it's time to polish this. You see how dull this currently looks? It may not look dull to you, but don't worry. It will look dull once I get through with this. This stuff is amazing. 
Now, ultimately, if you wanted to do this as absolutely perfect as possible, you would actually have like a glass sheet or something, you know, perfect flatness that you could actually rub this on. Unfortunately, I don't have anything like that, which is kind of a shame. But all you'll do is just take a little bit of the polish and you'll just rub it in. Don't push down on it. You don't want to put any, any real pressure or anything down into it. And you will notice that it will turn black. If it turns black, that means it's polishing. What I'm going to do is do a CPU core first, just to demonstrate how well this stuff actually works. And you don't want to go removing a whole bunch of it. So you see, I, that's, that's all the polishing I'm actually going to do on there. Now what I want to do is take a clean piece of cloth and start rubbing the excess back off. And again, you do want to make sure you get every bit of it off. You want to keep going to a clean piece of your, uh, of your paper towel or cloth or whatever you're using to, to buff this out. And you want to ensure that you don't get any more black or gray matter off onto it. Now polishing this, while may not make it perfectly 100% flat, what this will do is break up any tarnish that's on there um, and facilitate a much better heat transfer. You see, every time I do this, I'm still getting little bits of gray off of there. I gotta keep doing it until I get all of it off if I want, you know, maximum heat transfer. I'm gonna purposely not edit this part just to show you guys exactly how long this takes because it, it really does not take much at all. And every time you see me stop, see I'm still getting little bits of gray off. And I'm not using any real pressure on this at all. Just a very light touch. I'm letting the polish do the work. All right, see, I've got no gray left on there. So I'll just give it one final wipe. Now let's see if... Hopefully you can see the difference. Now I have to say, even that is still slightly hazy. That could actually be done even better. Um, yeah, the machine work on this apple is kind of slacking. If I wanted to do this completely perfectly, like I said, you take a very perfectly flat like piece of glass or something, and you can actually lap this down ever so slightly and have yourself a 100% perfectly flat surface. Um, I'm sure that is contributing to the inability of the stock system to reject all the heat from the um, from the Sandy Bridge chipset. So I'm going to do the other side and then we will get ready for some Arctic Silver. Now the last thing we'll do there is to ensure there's absolutely nothing left on the copper pad. We're going to go ahead and just do a quick wipe down with rubbing alcohol. Alright, so we've got our Arctic Silver 5. And what we're going to do is just put the tiniest bit of a drop there on the GPU. And now because of how long the Sandy Bridge CPU actually is, we're going to do a small line. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you exactly how much of this stuff I'm using. See, so do not need a whole lot. Actually, I even have more on there than I really need. So I really won't have any problem with this. So what we'll do is again, very carefully, making sure not to touch anything on there, is we're going to set this on in position. And then I'm just very, very gently pressing it together and wiggling it slightly back and forth. And what that does is ensure that I have a full spread. You don't want to install these completely. What you actually want to do is start all of them just slightly 
and then go around in a, a star pattern. I'll show you what I mean. But the other thing I should have mentioned is that when you do go, and when I did my little twist and turn as I you know, push these two, uh, the heat sink onto the cores, you want to be very, very careful not to let them separate again. You want to keep them together. What that does is ensure that you have absolutely no bubbles, no air bubbles in between there. Air, see, air is a very good insulator. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of that. Um, air does not allow heat to transfer through it very effectively at all. You see, I've started all six of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way around all six of them. I'll screw it down about two turns, two turns, two turns. going to keep going around it in that fashion. And the reason for that is to ensure I have even pressure on all the cores. Just snug these guys up a little. All right. Now we begin reassembly. Now reassembling this guy, you got to make sure that all of your wires and such are back above the board so you don't actually leave anything disconnected. So what I'll do is just take a small screwdriver and I'll just kind of lift these guys up and make sure that they're all above the board, as it were. And all three of those guys there. Let's see, I have this over here. There's, yeah, one right here. There was this. This one here. This one here. And there was one right here that I had forgotten to disconnect. There it is. I'll slide this back into place. Make sure everything's lined up nice and neat. my battery cable out from under there. I'm not hooking it up yet, obviously. So I've got this, this, and this. This cable. There was this little guy right here. The cable here and here both come from the optical drive. I've got this cable, I've got this cable, and I've got this cable. Of course, I've got the cables up here too coming from the uh, wireless card. I like to just make sure that I don't have anything stuck by just simply pressing slightly down on the board. You should see it all, everything should be nice and level. If you notice there's one side where it's rocking or anything like that, then you've clearly got something stuck underneath it. Got just a slight bit of dust there, nothing major, nothing I'm worried about at all. time again you can't be too careful with this kind of stuff all right now what we're gonna do start screwing get our number one screw back number one screwdriver start putting bolting everything back down huh these are Torx not Phillips bad John don't need to over tighten these or anything crazy just snug them down like to get really really crazy and over tighten stuff that's how you break stuff that's how you strip out screws this is all very soft aluminum that this is in this isn't exactly you know 7075 or t6 heat treated or anything of the sort so be very careful you don't you know cross or any of your screws take your time be gentle treat her like a lady be gentle with her Let's see, I had a couple of these guys that were kind of mounted around on things. So let's go ahead and make sure that's fully in. Make sure that our lock is lifted. Slide you into place. Now you should see a little white line of dots across there. That's how you'll know when you have it fully seated in. 
it's actually very common in the PC world for um, you know, laptop repair. See this little piece of tape that holds, sits on it. That cable's very stiff. So a piece of tape actually is not a whole hell of a lot of help. So all I'm gonna do is very gently, very carefully guide that ribbon back into place. Lock it in. LCD connection. Very carefully make sure that she fully seats. And then we will reattach the locking mechanism there. Alright, that's good. Let's go ahead and get. Okay, nope, that was already done. Alright, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and install this little latch. This latch was held in with Torx screws. So I'll hold that in place and very carefully, being sure not to cross thread anything. Install. I did not tighten that screw all the way down because I had to put the other side in still. Oh, I wish that was magnetic. That's it down. Very good. Continue working our way around. Got another what appears to be a little thermistor here. Go. Latch that in. And install this top piece here. Go ahead and install this. Actually, no, no, that's right. We had to remove the optical drive there. So let's go ahead and get that in. these all the way down yet. Hey guys, Dower here. Uh, I want to go ahead and apologize for that. I didn't realize that my camera actually ran out of uh, battery life on me and it died. It didn't beep at me or anything. I'm still new to this. If you've gotten your MacBook that far apart, I think it's pretty clear. Finish putting your fans in. Make sure that all your connections are good at, are, are in. Reconnect your battery last. Put the back plate back on, or the bottom plate rather, back on. Tighten your screws down, boot it up, you should be good to go. So again, I apologize for that. I wish I would have had the video for the entire thing. I really don't feel like pulling the MacBook back apart. I put the spec case on right after that, and I just don't need to take it back off right now. If I think about it later when I'm doing one of my updates on the spec case, I might go ahead and pull it out. We'll see. So again, sorry, but I think if you've got it that far down, you should be able to finish it out without too much difficulty. Thanks for watching. Well, I can already see that my idle temperature has come down. Looks like I'm doing about 75 degrees, 77 degrees now. I was sitting at about anywhere from 85 to 90 degrees. Not bad. Now one of the biggest increases in speed or in heat production that I found, for me at least, is playing Farmville on Facebook. 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump back on Facebook. I'll pull up Farmville. I'm going to let it run for a little bit. We'll see how it does. This, of course, will use the AMD uh, or the, yeah, the AMD 6770 video card. And we'll see just how hot we can get it. Previously, sitting here, I'm playing Farmville and harvesting crops and stuff. Previously, what I would see happen is my CPU temps would spike up. Um, my temperatures would usually run up, end up running close to uh, 195 to 200 degrees. We are slowly heating up. Definitely heating up much, much slower than before though, that's for sure. I have yet to come off of 2000 RPM on the fans. See my GPU is sitting at 132. Right, start planting some crops and get it running around. See if I can stress it a little. I can definitely say by now my fans would have been kicked up and running pretty hardcore. Still sitting at 2000 RPM. CPU sitting at 161, GPU sitting at 145. So far I seem to be maintaining this temperature. It's a solid 30 degrees lower than what I had before. GPU is sitting at 146 still. My fans still have not kicked up. We're at 180, 178. Yeah, before my fans would have kicked on well before now. Almost immediately after playing, they would have kicked right up. So I'm very surprised that they haven't. I'm liking it though. I'm very happy that they're not. GPU's up to 160. CPU sitting at 183, 82. Fans still have not come off 2000 RPM. SMC is reading 172, iStat is reading 189. Fans are still at 2000 RPM. Actually trying to see if I can get the fans to kick up at this point. <clears throat> Alright, let's go here. I'm gonna force the fans up. Now if the fans are running at 4000 RPM, let's see what happens to the temperature. Oh yeah, temperature immediately starts climbing down. Wow. Showing 151 on SMC, 154 versus 160. Awesome. I think overheating is now a thing of the past. Let me close out from Facebook here. Watch how fast this drops. Of course, that is with the fans still sitting on higher RPM, 4,000 RPM. Never mind kicking them all the way up. It'll certainly be interesting to see what happens when I start some heavy encoding with them. Yeah, absolutely going to call this one a success. So, there it is. Arctic Silver 5. 
um, polish the heat sinks. I don't think I'm going to have any problems at all with this guy getting warm on me. There you go.